Hello my darlings and welcome. Today I'd like to show you how I set up my watercolor paint palette. Let's do some magical crafting. I chose an artist quality brand of paint called M. Graham. I'll link all the art supplies in this video below if you'd like to purchase the same ones I use. I'm using eight five color sets in this palette the Quinacridone Quintet, the Marinescape set, the Jewel Tone set, the Landscape set, the Desert Southwest set, the New England set, the Cityscape set, and the Shades of Summer set. After doing some research, there were several reasons I chose this brand of paint. They're created with natural gum arabic as their only pigment medium, and they're made with an addition of blackberry honey, which prevents hardening. It's easy to re-wet and control these paints, which helps me avoid overworking my paper. They have strong pigments that don't become muddy when mixed together. M. Graham was founded in the early 1990s by two artists and they've remained a small company by choice, concentrating on producing quality watercolors. They describe their entire operation as nine folks and a part-time stray cat in a 3,000 square foot cinder block building surrounded by hops fields in rural Oregon. M. Graham currently offers 70 colors of watercolor paints, and most of these are single pigment tubes. However, I purchased eight five-tube sets, trying for as little overlapping colors as possible, though I did end up with a few duplicates. I unboxed all of the tubes of paint, sorting them into color order starting with yellow and removing any duplicates. Next, I got out an empty watercolor palette with half pan containers. Because I know that I'll be adding some additional handmade watercolors made by artisans on Etsy to this palette later, I made sure I had a large enough palette to hold one of each of my current colors with an extra empty row to fill later. Keeping the tubes in color order, I filled each half pan with paint. It's important to keep the palette level while you're filling it as well as while the paint is drying in the pans. Otherwise, these paints might run and mix together. This is especially a concern because the honey additive keeps M. Graham paint softer for longer. I gave my palette several days to dry. Next, I measured the top panel of the palette and traced the measurements onto a thick piece of watercolor paper. Then, I measured the width of one pan of watercolor and then traced out the same number of circles as there are colors across and down in the palette. I made sure to leave room under each row of circles to be able to write the name of each color. Keeping the tubes in color order is important as you fill the pans, because you'll use the tubes in the same color order to write the names of each color below each circle. With all the color names written out, I trimmed out the color key to fit inside the palette lid. The next part of the palette creation is to paint in every circle with every paint color. I used a very wet brush and attempted to drag the paint from the top left to the bottom right of each circle. This was an attempt to show the color from light to dark on each example. I had various levels of success with this technique, but as the paint dried I could see a gradient of color in most of the circles.
Off camera, I also painted samples of color onto eight squares of watercolor paper. I decided to rebox the tubes of unused paint in color order rather than in the sets they originally came in. Once the swatches of color were dry and labeled, I glued the square swatches onto the tops of each box sleeve. This way, I will easily be able to find the colors I need. Now, let's take a look at all the paint swatches after they've dried. Remember how I cautioned you to keep the tubes in color order while filling the pans? Well, it looks like I got two of my colors switched. These two violets need to be whited out and rewritten under the correct colors. And finally, I'd like to illustrate the necessity of a color swatch sheet. You can see that while some of the colors in the pans are true to their swatches, other colors differ wildly from the pan to the paper. Some of the best examples of this are quinacridone red, burnt sienna and sepia, and quinacridone gold. I hope this video was enjoyable to watch and helpful and informative if you're interested in setting up your own watercolor palette from scratch.